वेलकम बैक एवरी वन टू अनदर वीडियो एंड इन दिस वन वील बी टेकिंग अ लुक एट लॉजिक एनालाइजर्स एंड हाउ टू गेट स्टार्टड विद दैम एंड वॉट दे आर सो वॉट आई हैड द इम्प्रेशन वॉज दे वर एक्चुअली वेरी वेरी कॉस्टली डिवाइसिस बट इट टर्नस आउट इन इन द मेगा मार्केट यू कैन एक्चुअली गो अहेड एंड बाय वेरी वेरी चीप लॉजिक एनालाइजर्स फ्रॉम जेनरिक चाइनीज ब्रांड्स एंड दैट एक्चुअली परफॉर्म प्रेटी वेल एंड यू कैन हुक इट अप टू योर कंप्यूटर एंड मे बी एंड लाइक समथिंग लाइक डू यू नो और अदर स्टफ एंड एक्चुअली गेट अ लॉट मोर आउट ऑफ दैम सो वील बी टेकिंग अ लुक एट दैम दे कॉज यूजली लाइक अराउंड टेन डॉलर्स टू गेट फ्राम समवेयर लाइक ई बे एंड सो दे आर सोल्ड बाय वेरियस नेम्स Uh, mostly they are like uh, sali logic analyzers they are basically clones but not exactly the sali product uh, because salis are uh, start at around 100 bucks uh, us and these start around 10 dollars us and uh, we'll be taking a look at that so first of all what we have in front of us is a very very quick unboxing let's take a look at the software part of things so i am running our linux and we are using a software called sigrock now sigrock is available for windows uh, mac and linux everything alike now we'll be talking about linux now i'm not going into specifically how to install sigrock but i do uh, recommend compiling it from source the repos on ubuntu or our linux or something like that and downloading a pre built version uh, the sigrock's main page actually has all the information that you need to do that for arc fedora and ubuntu and that pretty much covers most of the operating system that you might be running at uh, and at the end what you will have is a program called pulse uh, pulse view that we are going to use now if you are a bit more of a professional then you already know this stuff but if you are a professional and you are watching this uh, sigrock cli is a, is supposedly a much better tool i don't have a bunch of uh information on it i have news it this is also my first time doing this stuff so sigrock cli will also be including in, uh, included in the whole uh, building documentation uh, apart from that you will need an fx2 l a f w uh, driver for it you will also have to compile that from source again instructions are available uh, and again this is for the cypress chip inside and it, this is what it interfaces with so i will leave everything in the description so our setup basically consists of an arduino uno here that has a a real time clock connected to it so this is ds1307 i think uh, and that is our uh, real time clock and it is interface through i squared c and that is what we are pro going to probe so we have our logic analyzer here and uh it is connected via uh, two of the channels to both the acl and sda ports uh, of the i squared c interface uh, and it's just in parallel between the uh, lo uh the bit between the rtc and the uh arduino so this is about it uh the arduino is coded to read data from the rtc rather than write to it and this is what we are going to see on the logic analyzer so let's go ahead and um, open up the pulse view view program so and it will take a few seconds to analyze and also at the time plug in our logic analyzer in the usb port so this seems to be already uh, opened up and it has detected the logic analyzer at sali if it doesn't you need to go to connect to device uh, select the driver and again in this case we are using the fx2 lafw1 and scan for devices and it will show up right here and mine says uh, sali logic with eight channels and that is what we are using so as you can see our all if eight of our channels are have been populated we do not need that uh, and what we are going to do is go ahead to this probe kind of a icon and disable all and then just disable d0 and d1 because that is what we are working on also on the uh, logic analyzer side of things uh the labeling actually started starts from channel 1 to channel 8 but uh, you should remember that on the software side of thing it goes from 0 to 7 so uh now on the uh, 
side of the samples we can actually get away with 500 kilohertz uh, for I squared C I have tried 250 maybe it works but 200 definitely doesn't work and uh, anything above that uh, or anything less than that doesn't work for I squared C on the Arduino we are going for one meg samples uh, I think we should just for safety sake maybe go up to one gig uh, doesn't make much of a difference and the interface is like you can um, scroll in and out a zoom in or zoom out of time by just using your scroll wheel or touchpad for the same now for getting the data out of it we are going to run the program and just zoom in a little bit of the data that is being captured and right now everything is at a low uh, and I'm going to bring the uh, Arduino back to life by plugging it in the USB port and we should see a high there and that's it that has started working so every this uh, kind of a, which seems like a diff, uh, dip in the voltage in the logic level but it's not we'll zoom in and see what that is uh, this is the data that we have captured uh, and the way it is it's right now very very zoomed out and it's not showing a lot so we'll just stop here now from our scroll uh, wheel we can actually just zoom out way in and now that what seemed like a dip dip seems to be way more clear and uh, here we can see the uh, time diagram here for square wave if you want to say but I'm just comfortable with time time diagram uh, I and the way it works is the one above is our actual data and the one below is our clock here the first uh, bit here is the start of the uh, when the clock says that the data has started this is the end and then again uh, one end more and then one more start and then it goes on till here where it finally ends uh, now a lot of this might not make much sense to a beginner it didn't for to me at the very beginning but this software actually has a wonderful quality and you can actually add i squared c right here which will decode it for you up to some point now from there we can actually go and select our scl and sda line so scl is our clock line and here we can see everything is wonderfully laid out and now if we go ahead uh, we can actually decode what it's trying to say and what it's trying to communicate so again s is start and p is i guess stop uh, again and there's a start here as well uh, so you can see uh, we have d0 at low for uh, two frames and then one frame is high for start and the next frame is low for start and then we go on to uh, get our data so these are one frames frame each so we can see we have 2, 1, a 0, a 1 and the rest is 0. This makes up the address for our I squared C clock at 68 uh, and then we have a data to say that we need to a bit to say that we need to write data which is 0 so we are uh, not writing uh, we are writing stuff uh, and then uh, we have a end bit and then here we start to write data and since as I said the data is not supposed to be written uh, we have zero right here so next we stop that and start again in uh, now in read mode so again we have our start then we have the address bit here so this all binary converts uh, up to here converts to uh, 68 and then we have the last bit as one which is our read bit now we are reading data now again do uh, remember this is the data from uh, the i squared c clock here so we have uh, 33 uh, seconds 8 minutes and 19 hours which corresponds okay ish to my system clock so the uh, ds uh, 130107 uh, is not a very accurate uh, real time clock and can be affected a lot by temperature and stuff so it's a bit off here but no problems with that uh, we just want to say the kind of data there is and as you would have guessed this is the just uh, an empty set in between and then the next set of data is just um, our 
date so it's 21st of 6th and 2017 is the year and that is how it works so that is pretty much it for reading data from i squared c port uh, coming in from the uh, real time clock now for real time clocks you can actually go ahead from here and stack a decoder and here you have a bunch of um, chipsets that you can choose from to decode and um, uh, get data from i'm just going to choose something uh, like ds1307 now you do see that there is a, a an issue where it says uh, written date time uh, minus one minus one minus one and the reason is it's not actually writing date time at all but if i uh, change the code uh, of arduino to write date and time we can see that the date and time gets written which i think i'll go just for the sake of this video i'll go and do it uh, so arduino ide uh, the code should be loaded by default uh, we'll just wait for it to load up Okay, so here we can see a bit more data. What I've done is just put everything, uh, the right portion of it in loop. Uh, and here we can see actually, actually a bit more data since it is in write mode and the software really likes it. So we have uh, date and time written uh, that seems to be right there. Uh, and then also it is decoding uh, seconds, minutes, hours, day of week, date, month and year. So the one that I thought was actually uh, just a blank space is simply day of week which it doesn't write, the library doesn't write or whatever it may be. Uh, right, so what difference we can see here is that uh, from data write it doesn't go back to stop. Uh, and in our original example there was a st stop and then it started again and then it went into a uh, data read mode here it doesn't stop and it just continues to write the data on to our um, i squared c device now for some reason i cannot uh, understand why it didn't decode this part uh, here right here the uh, bits register and time uh, that well the way it was doing uh, before for some reason it didn't do it but it's showing up really nicely right now um, still can't figure out why it's 0000, zero, zero, zero. maybe Saturday is re represented at 0 uh, don't know but apart from that yes uh, everything else seems good to go so I think this is for 6 and this is 17 represented in binary uh, and everything else seems good to go so this is how logic analyzers work what they are used for supposed i suppose i didn't really know how my uh my rtc sends data or i don't have a library for it i could have you know just uh, had this uh, graph with me and reverse engineered it because i know uh, certain things from either to some kind of a documentation or i could have uh, guessed that uh, 17, 6 and 21 right here were my uh, uh, date for today and then this was Saturday and this uh, or, or the, these three lines decoded as uh, my let's say uh, time uh, seconds, minutes and hours because I know what the current time is or, or something like that so it doesn't really matter and i knew how scl and sda work so yes uh, reverse engineering can be a thing you can pretty much guess everything and do it uh so that was about it for today's video i hope you guys really enjoyed it uh, it was a new experience for me and probably going to use it a lot more from now on 
and thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video hit the like button and subscribe and i'll see you all in the next one